right, right there. And that's no longer the unreviewed list. And if we had any questions about it, we should now post it on the, on the forum and say, hey, take a look. My question is this. How can I find out the life cycle of that bill so I can go and testify against it? Okay. I'm glad you asked that question. Now we're at the reviewed bills page where it now appears because we reviewed it. Um, so, so, so you can kind of order things by, uh, by score. And I think you can just refer to all the stuff here, right? Um, the question came up, how can I follow this bill? Um, if you click on a bill number, like the, oh, uh, does that work now? I think so. Really? What? <laughs> what? What's the question? Okay, well, he's, he's never waiting something. Okay, if there's a bill you want to follow, that little grayed out exclamation point next to it in the list, click on that, and then the system will now give you email updates every time there's any change to that bill. As in, it has a hearing coming up, it's going to be voted on on the floor, all that stuff. That's it, awesome. It that's, said, that's awesome. It says it will see where the bill is reviewed. Oh, that's not, okay, that's, that, okay. I, I knew that there was something that wasn't like right with this before, so I take that back. That's a cool thing that we don't have yet. Um, but if you take a look at the bill and you click on the bill, and then see where it says here, status, housing, committee, details? That details takes you to the bill's docket which is what tells you what the current action is on the bill and what the next action is going to be on the bill. So right now, this is in the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee, right? It's, it's going to be a... Uh, it's due out of the committee on the 23rd of February. Right, but that's, that just it doesn't really tell us where we're we have to be actionable. Well, there is no action yet, so that's essential. No, but I thought it had a, um, it had a, it had a hearing date on our site. Maybe we just made something up. Oh, no, no, it's right here. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, this is like, this is the document. Okay, click on that. This is the document, yes. Um, in public hearing. Uh, right there. But where is all the same thing at the same time? Right. <laughs> Fortunately, they're all in the same room. That's public the hearing on the 10th at 1 o'clock. I mean, there's a ledge, whatever. Um, so, by checking the docket, you can be, you need to follow the bill. Okay. Yes. Uh, is there any way to sign up to get alerts for all of the bills that are like above or below a certain rating? I want to hear all the bills that are worse than nine or better than ten. Actually, yes. If you go to email alerts, look at that. Exactly what you asked for. I still want to. I still really, really, email really want to get the alerts every time there's a status update of the bill, not when it's reviewed, but like. Yeah. Oh, so this would just be when it's reviewed. This would be when it's reviewed. Oh, okay. Bill. Uh, perhaps a quick series of questions. What does the bang in front of the bill number currently do? What does it accomplish? It turns on an email that will be sent to you anytime someone reviews the bill. Ah. Okay. All right. Um, is uh, is the functionality of an email anytime? Anything that's changed be implemented uh, imminently? No. I'd love it to be, but no. Not necessarily this session. No. Probably not this session. Okay. okay. If it were to be <laughs> implemented this session, if I have two dozen bills that I've put a bang on, will that be retained? when that functionality is introduced and I will automatically be added to those? I don't know what's involved in the program, programming, so I'm asking. Speaking as an IT geek that's worked with the attorneys before that answered the question whether or not it's an opt-in or an opt-out and whether or not you actually intend to have emails for every notification for everything that changes on the docket or if you just want to let them know that was changed. Sorry. I'm sure answer is no. Huh? So let's talk a little bit about the life cycle of the bill. This is important. We'll start with House bills. A member of the House of Representatives uh, goes to legislative uh, services and requests that a bill be written that does X. Maybe even comes with specific language and says, please put this into a bill. Okay. We 
we have a bill. The bill gets a bill number. Actually, the first bill get first, the legislator informs them that there's going to be a bill. They reserve an LSR, a legislative services request. Um, once the bill has been signed off on, once the text has been signed off on, a bill number is generated and appears on the state's website with the text as submitted. Um, and now we have a bill. So we have a bill. The bill will first be heard in a public hearing in the House of Representatives in the committee to which the bill was assigned. So there is actually a, another committee that just assigns bills to committees. The um, bill goes to a committee. It's a public hearing. Now, sometime after the public hearing, typically a week or two, there will be an executive session on the bill. In the executive session, the committee members, most of whom presumably were at the public hearing and heard the arguments for and against, vote whether to, uh, generally whether to recommend the bill ought to pass OTP, or is inexpedient to legislate as it killed this bill. We don't like this one. Big blow away, ITL. Generally, those are the two options uh, from the committee. There can also be ought to pass as amended. They can make some amendments to the bill, some proposed amendments to the bill. The bill, as originally written, will go to the floor. <coughs> it will go to the floor and be voted on um, before any amendments are voted on. But if there are amendments suggested by the committee, the, the committee can vote ought to pass with amendments of TPA. And those are basically the three things that you see come out of the committee. Okay? So, bill, public hearing, later executive session, which then results in ought to pass, or ITL, to the House floor. Okay? So now the entire House meets, the bill comes up, and now there's two possibilities. There's two possibilities for this bill. If unanimously, or almost unanimously, everyone on the committee voted one way or another, the entire committee here all voted ITL on this bill, except for Elizabeth. One person, and typically it's one person, and the chair will generally decide, do you, do you have any opposition to us placing this on the consent calendar? The person will say no. One person will say yes, I'm going to take this to the floor. So, there's two possibilities. <coughs> if the bill goes on what's called the consent calendar, it's going to be dealt with on max. By default, all of the bills, maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe 50, on the consent calendar will all be voted with in one vote. And the motion will be, do we accept whatever the committee said on all these bills and just go along with the committee whatever they said? And the entire House will vote yes, and that's 50 bills done. Okay. So if you're on the consent calendar and as an ITL, you're probably going to die. If you're on the consent calendar as an OTP or an OTPA, your bill's probably going to live. Okay? Now, any rep can pull a bill off of the consent calendar and put it onto the other calendar, which is called the regular calendar. A bill will go on the regular calendar if there is honest and significant disagreement on the committee. You know, half the committee votes one way, half the committee votes the other. Hey, maybe even four people on the committee vote contrary to the rest of the committee. All right. We're going to talk about this as on the regular calendar. It will be called up specifically. It will be voted on individually by the entire body, by the entire house. Now, but any one rep can pull anything off of consent. And that can be used as a terrorist weapon. <laughs> it has been used as a terrorist weapon by Representative Steve Valancourt from Manchester. It's, if you really don't care what other people think of you, you can force them to have an extended debate and vote on every fucking bill. Whether we're going to rename this bridge, whether inmates are going to eat vegetarian meals, we're all going to vote on every single bill. You can do that. One rep, go up the entire thing. And if you have nine more, you can make them put their name to it. Yeah, okay. So, so one rep can pull a bill on the consent calendar. Um, I believe it's, help me out here, to get a, to get a, to get a roll call vote, you need 10. Somebody to call for roll call and then a total of 10. I don't know if it's a total of 10 or 10 to second. So, with 10 people, you can force a roll call vote. Okay. Um, so, let us say, now you'll notice now every single bill, every single bill will go to the entire house. 
And if any one representative wants the entire House to vote specifically on that bill and have that debate, it will happen. There's no way in New Hampshire to kill a bill in committee or let a bill die in committee. It will go to the whole floor. That's very powerful. Okay. Um, public hearing, executive session, poll file. Let's assume we have ought to pass, and the whole floor votes on it, and the bill passes. Great. Now it goes to the Senate. And in the Senate, we start all over. There'll be another public hearing, but this time in a Senate committee. The Senate committee will then have an executive session, and that Senate committee will then ought to pass, ought to pass as amended, or it expedient to legis legislate the bill. Then the whole Senate as a body will vote on the bill. They again have a consent calendar and a regular calendar. Um, and if it passes the Senate, then generally, generally, the House will have made some changes, some amendment to the bill. The Senate will have made some changes, some you know, amendment to the bill. And if either side has made an amendment, or the you know, where the bill that either side passes isn't exactly which word identical to what the other side passes, then they have to form what's called a committee of conference, where they have people from both the House and the Senate get together, um, try to work out a final set of text for the bill, which then has to go back and be approved by both chambers again before it can become a law. So the only step in New Hampshire at which the default is the thing becomes a law is if both the House and the Senate have passed identical versions of the bill, then I believe the governor has 10 days? Maybe six. Six days? From the time it's given to him. There's a whole process between those things. Okay. Okay. Then by default, if the governor does nothing, it's going to be a law. Or the governor can choose to have a ceremony and sign it and show that he's really with this one. Or the governor can veto it, and then it goes back, and it would have to be uh, approved by a third majority in each chamber? For what state in a the Pardon? Theodore O'Brien has to have two-thirds two in each one. chart. In each chamber, okay. Um, so a bill can die in either chamber. So when the whole floor, when the whole house or the whole Senate votes, and if it comes out of ITL, the bill is dead. Can the Senate introduce new legislation, or is it just the House? I decide to introduce legislation. Um, you see these bills are uh, large HB House bills. It also bills mark C bills mark SB Senate bill. That means a senator submitted the bill, and it goes to the Senate first. Um, the Senate has the hearings and, and, and the up or down vote, but they ought to pass or the inexpedient to legislate over the PITL, uh, and then it goes to the House. Now, so the bill, like fiscal bills start in the Senate, and everything else starts in the House. Just the opposite of that. Uh, spend, I, I, my understanding is uh, bills with. Any bill. Appropriations bills have to start in the House. Thought. But I think no one pays attention to that anymore. Okay. Right. I was just going to say one thing that about, we talk about ITL not about to pass. Just because a bill goes to the floor and gets voted, it comes up um, ought to pass, and it does not have enough votes to pass on the floor, does not mean it dies. Huh. It has to have a, take a positive action. So then, so you can have a bill, the vegetarian bill comes up to the floor. And the committee said ought to pass, and they take a vote, and the majority said, no. Okay, now we all sit there and go, okay. <laughs> and then somebody has to make a motion either to amend that or make a motion to ITL. Okay. It has to, something, there has to be a positive <laughs> Something action. has to happen. Something, something has right. to happen. Nothing just like, okay, you didn't win, so we win. No. So, and we, we had a couple bills this year that we... Couldn't, right. you know, ought to pass did not pass. ITL did not pass. And they're like, okay, uh, ought to pass with them. No, nope, that won't pass. So then finally somebody makes a motion to say, look, because at some point, you could be there all day and no, it's never going to pass. And so there, there are two more statuses that you may see as, as time wears on. Uh, and those are laid on table, which means this bill is sitting on the speaker's table and can be introduced at any moment the speaker feels like bringing it off the table. Right. With a two-thirds majority. With a two-thirds takes majority. Two-thirds takes a little bit the table. Really? Mm. Or so the bill can be a single majority to put it on the table, and a two-thirds majority to take it off. Correct, Mark? Or is it two-thirds to lay it on the table? No, I think what you said was I correct. think it's a single majority to put it on 
the table two thirds to take off. Right. And table generally means your bill's going to die because no one wants to deal with it anymore. And, and that would happen if you would have a not getting a majority on either side, and then what? There's a whole bunch of people that want a whole bunch of different amendments and they can't agree. Yeah. So they don't really want to kill it, and nobody's going to get their wish. <clears throat> uh, the other status that you'll sometimes see is uh, basically the, the 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 floor can vote to put it back in committee. Like we don't like anything that we're hearing. Let's put it back in committee, and they got to work some more on the legislation, and then they'll come back to us. And the name of that status is? It's not recommit. Recommit. Status recommit, going back to the committee. And can that go with like some sort of official statement about what they want the committee to work on? Oh, blurbs. Thank you for referring to that. Um, every week, when the members of the House gather together to vote on the regular calendar bills and the bills that were pulled from the consent calendar. Um, generally, um, there are some group, well, actually there, there'll be a calendar. Uh, it's called the calendar and it lists all the bills that, the calendar? that are going to be discussed that day. And for each one, it'll give the bill, it'll give its title, and then we'll have a Wait, minority. Go to the 70 because uh, that one doesn't have any yeah, it's supposed to go to one like in October or something. Okay. You'll see a, 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 uh, the majority of the committee will have someone write a blurb saying why we you know, vote this way. And sometimes the minority of the committee will have someone write a blurb about why they feel you know, their, their two cents worth. And so the pro and the con will go to all of the uh, members before they vote in the House. Okay. So you'll see, you know, relative to ah, workers' compensation for illegal aliens ought to pass an amendment. Um, Rep. William J. Infantine for Labor, Industrial, and Rehabilitative Services says the title of the bill sounds simple. However, a staying New Hampshire Supreme Court decision combined with a myriad of other issues makes this bill too difficult to write in the time frame given. It was the request of the sponsor to amend the bill to establish a study committee on the issue. <laughs> that means we won. Um, the report of the committee is due on this vote 13 to 0. Consent calendar material ought to pass with the amendment. Okay. Now it's just a majority blur, but if it's a split vote, like right. if it were 8 to 5, you'd also see a minority blur. Yeah, we'll yeah, it looked great on that labor one. There was probably a, I think we had at least one blur. Criminal justice. Well, this will be better. <laughs> Look at this. There you go. Oh, my God. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at the bottom of the screen, prefer to enter and study it. <laughs> yeah. We should gain minority. There you go. Okay. Um, in effort to make the prosecutor poaching easier, a law was enacted. Blah, blah. And the minority feels this amendment will really increase the risk for natural history of a firearm. All right, you can people said that. Um, we will sometimes, often, use the bullet points that you give in the pro and anti liberty talking points in the constitutional point. Those will very often feed directly into the gold standard, which is sort of our libertarian. Uh, penis gallery counterpoint to either the uh, you know, minority or majority on the given bill. Um, think about those things as you write them. As you read some of these reports and go to the calendar and read some of these, particularly uh, bills that you're interested in, and, and see. And see the majority of them. And that'll give you some ideas about bullet points that you can use in the future on those. Go ahead and read the minority report for 194. 194? Okay. HB 194, repealing the prohibition on having or carrying certain crossbow, rifles, or shotguns in vehicles. Majority said wants to pass an amendment. Minority said it's inexpedient to legislate. Michael J. McCarthy for the majority of fish and game and marine resources. In an effort to make the prosecution of poaching easier, a law was enacted. Over three quarters of a century ago, which made it illegal to have a loaded long gun in one vehicle. The unintended consequence of this law was to deny people's property rights. For example, it's illegal for a farmer to have a loaded rifle or shotgun on a tractor to shoot pests. The law also denied people's Second Amendment rights in that it would become a crime. 
to have a right for a shotgun was able to defend one's family, to compromise between people and rights of public safety, 18194 is amended, redefines a loaded weapon as a rifle or shotgun with a round in the chamber. If there is no round in the chamber, it can't discharge, but could still be used for defense. It also allows people to do what they please on their own land. Minority Report says, the one to ITL that says, the minority feels that this amended bill increases the risk for an accidental discharge of a firearm. <laughs> this bill changes the definition of a firearm that is considered to be loaded or unloaded. If passed, it will become legal to have a magazine or clip inside a weapon as long as there is no bullet in the chamber ready to be fired. All recognized firearm safety and instructional organizations teach that a firearm contains no bullets, no magazine, or no clip until it is ready to be used. Existing law has been in place for 74 years. It keeps bullets completely outside of a firearm. Passes this bill means that a bullet may be inside the gun, but not in the chamber, thus one step away from ready to fire. This can become a dangerous situation that should not be casually accepted, and I'm thinking of the children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Did this one end up like gold standards agree? Still? I don't know. Do you think it will? Yes. Oh, there you go. Last year. Do you think it will be marked high? No, this is coming up in January. No, this is past. Oh, we haven't done this yet? Yeah. Coming up in January. Okay, never mind. Let's read the actual text. Oh, 
Repeal. I like it. RSA 275 <laughs> 48 1B1 relative to withholding of union dues is repealed. This is one of those ones where we really do need to take a look at the RSA, don't we? Yeah, that's an interesting set. 275 48 Roman 1 B. Oh, what? ID1? Yeah. ID1? Two words. Two words.
there is, I think there can be a, a bit of a discussion in that, I mean, the question, if the question comes up, I guess maybe you can sign something on hiring. But, but if a business wanted to say, business owner wanted to say, you know, we want to have, do union, you know, this is, we're a union business, if you're going to work here, you got to be okay with part of your money from the union. Um, I mean, the business owner should be able to, if they want to run their business that way, they can. But I guess you could say that then they would just, would they be able to say, if you're going to work here and you have to sign this authorization in order to work here, we can get work around that. So, what's the case now? What's the case now? It increases liberty. It increases liberty because it gives the person the option to not have to do on the other hand, there is, there is a discussion, because again, it's not clear. I know the poll. There is a discussion, because if an owner wants to have a policy for their business a certain way, we can open They can't, because is. that RSA doesn't allow them to. Well, wouldn't so that be in the contract? Like, the, the contract that they sign when they begin employment? It, it, it may be, but the RSA still dictates what the employer can include in a contract. Yeah, this, this is an important point. Labor is for, not for as all, easy as ever. For all legislation, we are measuring legislation against the RSA that exists today. Not against what we would like, what we would like it to start. Starting out with, can we go back to that RSA that we saw in section 275? Yeah. This seems so starting out with the fact that any agreement that you have between you and an employer already has this as a right. Whether you sign it or not, this is already there. Even if it's not in your contract, the state, that's what the state does, got in the way of your, your ability to contract. <coughs> no employer may withhold or divert any portion of an employee's wages unless written authorization uh, or it's union dues or. So in other words, they're person. saying that if you're, if you're at a union shop, they can take your money right now. Right now. Right now, they can take your money whether you want them to or not. And same deal right now for housing and utilities. Right now, your employer can say, right. unless you're working for me, I'm paying for housing and utilities and I'm taking it out of your... And then there's job. probably a, a labor rule or something that quantifies what is reasonable and standard for housing and utilities. Just right. saying. I thought so. So, so, so if, you have a, if you have, if you're working for a company already, say, can the, can the owner of the negotiations or whatever just double your union dues and you have no choice and it gets withdrawn? Or is this something that the, no. the, the person who got hired already agreed to and they got hired to sign on and say, yeah, this much money? No, no, they don't get to agree or not on union dues. The union will decide whether or not you pay. So it can't change after you're already employed? Yes. That's the question. If it's closed shop. If it's any shop, it doesn't, there's no such thing as a closed shop supposedly in New Hampshire. However, you cannot opt out. <laughs> okay. yeah. You can't opt out of the union. Well, you can, but they can still require you to pay the fees. You pay the negotiation fees. So by, by the logic of this bill, eliminating any one of these 12 is pro-liberty. If it just said no employer may withhold every portion, let's say we got rid of all the exceptions. It just said no employer may withhold it for any portion of employees' wages for any reason at all. Right. Well, that would be a pretty strongly anti-liberty statement, I would say. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you know maybe actually exceptions reduce the impact of the overall bill. And I mean, there's a thought in that. Term. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the discussion. Yeah. And I think this is this is exactly. Um, the tack that the more effective people who oppose this bill, that's exactly the tack they're going to take. They're going to say, yes, you've increased employees' freedom because you've reduced employers' freedom. I can guess where that bill will go. That will pass, and then it'll be the number. <laughs> well, it's going to pass because a bunch of Republicans will sign on to it. You're much well, no, I, 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 ironically, but we will see. No, there, there is a second bill. It's interesting that uh, some of the discussion that we're having here, the other bill, because there's two of them that I saw, the other one says um, you're not allowed to withhold union dues from state employees. That's a different that's story. That's definitely a problem. That is probably a problem. As soon as you like, like state employees, employees, then it's all it's all fair. Because, I mean, I'd be, out, I'd be for outright prohibition of unions when it comes to state employees. So that's when Yep. And that's where this one's going to have a harder time because 
private sector unions, this will be come down to you're interfering with a contract. Public sector unions are dictated by the state of New Hampshire. Private sector is dictated by So you don't think state employees have a right to contract? They do, but I also don't have the right to have to pay a state employee to do the payroll for, uh, to do bookkeeping for the union. I just like asking that question. No, I know. <laughs> um, what's in paragraph D? What's in paragraph D? I had that question. Oh, why is it important first? As provided, it's in paragraph D. Yeah. Um, like, uh, on the employee's written request, the employer may deduct the following items from the employee's wages, provided the employer shall provide a written itemized accounting of such requested deductions to the employee at least once per month. Voluntary contributions to cafeteria plans, voluntary payments to the employee, voluntary installment programs. Is anyone on this committee? I end this bill by by doing like this entire It'll session. never happen. That's uh, unfortunately, I agree, but. And that's not the bill in front of us. Yeah, and that, that's, that, well, that's a good point. It's very frustrating. Anytime you see something, and this is important, where you think, wow, this bill could be a lot better yeah. if it just did this one little yeah. thing, please suggest the amendment in the review. Yeah. It is easy for us, particularly if you write it up exactly like, would, you know, I would recommend uh, amending this bill as follows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Move section two, Roman B one two section subparagraph D. Make it real important not. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, you just interested the definitions of the bottom are saying oh okay. So there's names. Uniform means an garment with a company logo or fashion of distinctive design, worn by one or more employees and serving as a means of identity. I think someone here asked one of these questions on how it would immediately go on the top to the Okay, it's interesting that we've never experienced a problem. And the definitions can play a big No, seriously. If you see something that maybe there could be an amendment here, put the amendment in. Those are really good. We can use those. And you may find, you really, really have a high probability of finding that what you just typed up in your underpants at 3 a.m. while you were on the internet becomes law in the state of New Hampshire. I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. Um, so, do, do we have a liberty pro or anti on this one? Well, if we're, since we are comparing it not to where things, we wish things were, but the way things are right now, I think <clears throat> it's pro. I would have to look at the other parts because I do have concerns. So I would have to know more about the current law as far as. I, I do like to encourage my bill reviewers. Thank you, bill reviewers. Um, in a bill like this, don't get so terrified that you're going to stop here and not keep going. Because this is going to get reviewed by three people. Right. Or five or six. So go ahead and pick one. Pro liberty. Pro liberty. Pro liberty. <laughs> Impact. Of the 
private sector um, employment base is union education. So most of the people lobbying on this would be public unions, not private unions. Yes. yes. Well, that's part of the <laughs> <laughs> party, yes. yes. It will be the SDA, the NEA, the oh, yeah. firefighters union, the, the cops. police union, the cops. The state of the SEO. We're showing the uniform every time. We show it back. I think you'll have to put it to a letter. That's what I mean. I think it's just a single letter. I think it's a single letter. And it'll be a little bigger. Okay. So, personally, if it were me, I would go high impact on this one. Really? I would. And why is that, though? Just yeah, because it's the, the economic impact and the social impact. Okay. Yeah. I but I, I could I could certainly see the argument for average impact because this is one of those that it's kind of very focused on specific groups of people. It's very mm -hmm. large. Group of people, but, but it's not the large group of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a um, okay. Um, this does not seem to create a study committee. Okay, civil rights. Does this protect rights or eliminate or demean rights? I think it protects your rights, but it's hard to say. It, 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 it is a little bit of a discussion again because we're looking at the property ownership rights of the owner of the business. So it, 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 so we're looking at we, we said pro liberty, so we're looking at it from that perspective. Though I guess we would say that's right. Well, the other perspective is this: the union might have an agreement with the employer, right, that all employees be members of the union. So it might be a, a mutual agreement between the employer and the employee, right? right. But then they can just get written authorization. Right. So if, if it's a mutual agreement, I'm sure everyone would be willing to sign to have their union be What about how it negates the right side of the sentence? What was that? Sorry. Or supplant them with the government right to privileges. This is removing government right to privilege to the employer. It is true. It is removing the government right to privilege because it's saying you can't just automatically do this. You have to get permission. I, I personally go either way on this. Or maybe it's a... Um, I would say that if you are the bill reviewer and you really don't know, not applicable is, is, is applicable. <laughs> if you can see both sides but your gut tells you one way or the other, go with your gut or the reviewer, then you can always put a note down in the box. I would leave this to not say. Personal responsibility does increase personal responsibility, promote protection of a victimhood, or non applicable. Not applicable, right. Uh, protect personal property. This is one of those that you could shoehorn anything into private property. I mean, we're libertarians, we think everything's about private property, right? Um, personally, I don't think this is a private property oriented <laughs> bill, but you can, that, that, that's the point of contention is with property, is a job, and the freedom to that, but I, it's not really about private property. Although it's about private property, it says that if this bill is passed, you can no longer kill dogs on your property or something like that. <clears throat> All right. Um, is this legislation written clearly? Yes. Yes. Strike this one. There's no, yeah, there's, there's no hidden there. agenda. Yeah. Anything that says repeal is almost always on the um, increases accountability or reduces accountability for absolved blame. We're not applicable. I think increases because it requires a written, like a written permission for somebody else to do something. So it makes a clearer paper trail in a way. I don't know. I'm 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 brand new at this, so I don't know. No, that makes a good question because it's specific to officials and agencies. Hmm. Question. I, I don't see that this has that much impact on officials or agencies or the bureaucracy in general. You'll see a lot of bills that say, uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, give some to such agency rulemaking authority. Yes. <laughs> but there, I mean, accountability. Doesn't just we want it to apply to everybody, not just officials. And I think that the, the intent of the question is really to help ferret out the large class of bills that really do explicitly say that 
um, you know, an official is authorized to do a wiretap, and you know, you're, you know, you won't be subject to any. This is more about accountability of government, not about accountability between two individuals. There should be like a section that would be like the All its fails, notes. Okay, hey, how about this one? Constitutionality. I, I know. I, I just know that if Dan his name is on the bill, and I can find it's something else. If I can find any <laughs> constitutional thing about it, I'm going to go and I'm going to be at the public hearing. I'm going to say this bill is unconstitutional because blah blah blah, and that's great. Because everyone gets all screwed up because they think Dan Itza knows everything about the Constitution. <laughs> if he sees like he did get yeah. one bill this this past session that was clearly unconstitutional. What was that? He had wanted to make it. Um, have police officers to allow a female driver at nighttime to be able to continue to drive to a safe place before they pull over. Oh, and the Constitution in Article 10. Yes, you can. It's, it's better to create a second class of citizens. So I, it was surprising who was the sponsor of the bill. I was sitting next to him and I thought he was going to speak against it. But when I realized he was speaking for the piece of legislation, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, so he's not perfect. Oh, Article 10 is right, but I'm always over there. Yes, Article 10 is right. Okay, anyways, um, the, the driver here says it's completely legal. I'll, I'll go with that for now. Which, uh, which, which part of Article are you thinking? Right to contract. 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 Uh, in four summary, it's literature, public professors, and non-police, etc. Okay. We haven't got Article 83 on text. This is presumably a relevant the legislation. Enforceable? Is this 
important. Yes. Yeah. It's easily important. Like, I would feel like it's um, Increase or decrease bureaucracy and regulation? Decrease. They found it. No, it's really not. I, I can see either decrease yeah. or not applicable on this one. I mean, it's the same thing for the two words. Fiscal impact? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Taxation? No. Okay. Constitutional note, since the Constitution was mentioned, should probably just, just you know, part of it. Part, that was part of the first article? Second. 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 Part two article. It's quite a delightful article. Article 83, which discusses uh, <laughs> free trade. Free. For a liberty talking points. For a liberty talking points. Well, no, seriously. As Dan said, the Constitution, the uh, 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 contracts clause, the Constitution, U.S. Constitution. Oh, and, and, and the U.S. Constitution. Last time I tried to get to the Constitution. Yeah, it's not easy to find. It gave me a four or four. Just because it's. Yeah. There's probably other sources though. What's <laughs> in the awesome bar, if you check Bill of Rights, it will show up. Part 2, Article 83. Yeah. Yeah, Is the bill just to remove that section of the previous law which says they could hold the union yes. without permission? Because there's, there's no issue. Right, it's just taking out one of the right. things that they can automatically do. Right. Um, if an employer has an agreement with the union that you You're still going to have to pay the union dues. They just can't, they have, your employer just can't automatically take it out of your paycheck. Right, but if the employer has an agreement with the union that they do take it out of the paycheck, that'd be okay too. Oh, there you go. That's going to come into argument because I think that's what. Yeah. Is it not interested in personal access? I, I, I would suggest saying something to the effect of, uh, I mean, really, really it solve the whole question. If you allow the owner to be signing on these agreements and they should be able to do that. If you want to say, people, in order to work for me, you're going to have to agree to this, you should be able to do that and then solve the whole problem. Because then you can say, if you want to run a little shop, then you just place that as your partner of money. Well, see, this money is the price wide rack of 35, which gives the union much more power to make that kind of agreement. Yes. So. And then the P up, then more letters come in, like the PELRB and the. Something else, something LRB, and then. Yeah, I think what you guys are messed up. The union agreements are all messed yes. up. So. These are the pro and anti liberty talking points that should be on here. The bit about the employer's freedom to uh, uh, establish with union. contractual with requirements with his employees, in whatever sense, uh, is, is diminished by this bill. But the employees' right to choose how they pay their union is increased. Or whether they pay their union. Well, no. This doesn't say that you don't have to pay the union. This just says you can't withhold it out of your paycheck. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. And while we were talking, Dan did the right thing, which is to specifically put the relevant bit of the Constitution in that section so that someone who's got only a few moments before a public hearing is just going to say a few words and the committee has the relevant bit right there in front of them. And constitutional points usually are bullet number one on bullet two. Yeah. Right. That's all. Okay, pro liberty talking points. I think we said this was pro liberty, so pro liberty talking points would be increases the freedom of, uh, increases the, you know, the, 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 the right, the employee's right to. Uh, it actually just increases the employee's um, right to their weight, to what is withheld from their wages. Property rights. Employers. I think you pretty much signed um, it. It would probably be good to to give a little bit more elaboration on each point if someone hasn't just read the bill and thought about these things. Um, increase the freedom of employees. Um, you know, specifically, uh, union dues will be withheld only if they specifically request them.
employers that have some uh, vision to employ them.
Uh, I have a question about what you're saying. Some of the important bills might get reviewed multiple times. What happens uh, with the subsequent reviews? Are they kind of like averaged in, or what's the, how does that work? So only the most recent review gives the bill its current numerical score. Oh, okay. But all of the prior re like review comments are you know, tracked in the system. Okay, okay. I see. So don't go and go smash them in the room. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff, and by the way, if you hear that you like this makes no sense to you, yeah, like this, and you do not understand how this is, a, go ahead and like you know update it. Like you know, I, I fundamentally disagree with uh, the review on this bill because blah blah. Um, update the bill with that, and go post in the forum. Hey, I think we need to look at bill blah blah blah. I disagree with the review. We can have a discussion. Exactly. This bill establishes a committee. Ah, okay. Here, here. These are easy to review. Let's review this bill right now. Okay. Establishing a committee. Oh, I know how to review this bill. Let's review this bill. Okay. Um, allowing towns to split the smaller political subdivisions. Yeah, okay. Um, down, down, down. Study committee. Click. Impact low. Great. Okay, we're done. Oh, so yeah. wait, it's a committee. It's a study committee. No. no. This time. Okay. Now, is anybody really interested enough to read the bill? It's not a bad idea. You know, read the bill. But, it's, but if it's a study committee, by definition, it's, it's a lower priority. It's low impact. It's because a lot of times what the study committee, we sent something to the study committee this year. I think that illegal alien thing, and the only reason we did is because we couldn't, we, we had a deadline. We had a deadline to meet, and there was just no way we could process the bill right. in time for the deadline. And the only we could either kill it, but we didn't think it should be killed, or create a study I thought committee. it should be killed, and I was glad to see it. Should be killed, but, yeah. You know what I mean? It was, there was, it was just... Had more tentacles than we had time. Okay, uh, a couple of final, final quick notes. Most of what you see are HB bills, house bill bills, those who are right about it. Um, you will see two other flavors, two other animals of bill. CACR, that's a constitutional amendment, uh, potential constitutional amendment. Those are always high impact. Um, and you'll see HR. House resolution, or you'll see JR joint resolution. Pardon? I said they mean nothing. They mean nothing. Resolutions resolution, joint resolution. do not change the, the law. Change. They're just approximation. They're by definition low impact. They're AMPS. Yeah. They're and they way too much time is spent on House resolution. Yeah. We're going to send a letter to the Senate members and the you know, U.S. congressmen. Saying that they have to repeal Reggie. Great. Get your Great. daughters to work yeah. on that. Let's get back yeah. to real. You don't have no and work. You gotta do that work. And they'll debate it for what, this will take up three hours in the morning on the House floor, and you're like, who cares? If it does not change any law in New Hampshire, it's a low priority bill. Now, having said that, there are resolutions that turn out thousands of people in the state house passionately. For example, like a resolution. Uh, resolving that New Hampshire is a sovereign country and the United States can go itself and retire to this crap. And we, you know. I mean, I guess there are some that are kind of. That but that's still, it's still it's just a resolution. It doesn't actually change it's, anything. It's, it's, it's still, it's hard for me to think of something like that as being low impact, though. Like, it is. But it that's doesn't kind of a Right, but it doesn't do anything. It's great theater. It yeah, is that's theater. about it. It's exactly. feel good legislation. It's, it's not what we focus on. We focus on things that actually change so the law. It's impact on the law, not impact in some broad direct, society. Something that's going to have a direct result, and that's only going to be a letter. That's just a statement. If it's just it's a resolution, not it's not even medium. It may be its medium impact because I, you'd have to work on that. It's if it's a study it's committee not. or it's a resolution, it doesn't matter how great or how awful it is, the impact is going to be minimal. Okay, any questions? Please go home and start reviewing some bills. Thank you.
Well, it's not like just one.